Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> I'll go through the intro again. Okay, so yeah. Uh, once again, thanks everyone for coming down. Uh, this is an introduction to HTML and CSS. And before we proceed with the workshop, let me introduce uh, ourselves. Uh, I'm Jing Yan. I'm a member of the NUS Hackers Core team. Uh, we have two co-hosts today, Yitao and Chris. Uh, they'll be helping me with this workshop and uh, they'll be helping answer questions in the chat and other things. Uh, so if you have anything at any point, please feel free to type into the Zoom chat. And then uh, if I don't see, one of them will be there to assist you. Uh. Yeah, so uh, before we proceed, uh, in the email that I sent out, right, uh, I, uh, it was stated that you will need a web browser, a modern web browser, something like a Firefox or Chrome or Safari. I'll be using Firefox for my workshop and also your preferred code editor, like for example, Visual Studio Code. But uh, last night someone shared with me something called Code Sandbox, which I think is adequate. So for this workshop, I haven't played much with it, but I'll send a link to it in the chat. So you can access some of the exercise files that I'm, I'll be talking about as we go through this workshop. And if you want to have your own copy of it, I think you can click on this fork button so you can have your own copy to edit around for the rest of the workshop. Uh, I've sent it in the Zoom chat. Yep. Uh, please don't do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but for HTML and CSS, and not just that, uh, there's this website called MDN, it stands for Mozilla Developer Network, where they have very comprehensive documentation of not just HTML and CSS, pretty much everything web related. Uh, I've included the links in the slides where uh, they will be sent out at the end of this workshop, so don't worry too much about that. So uh, as MDN is really a comprehensive documentation for like all web related things. As you can see here, we have HTML, CSS, SVG. Uh, yeah, it's very comprehensive. There's a lot of things here that I don't even know about. Yeah. And the other is the HTML specification itself, which is this link. So this is a specification of like uh, HTML itself. Uh, it's very comprehensive. It tells you exactly what HTML should be like. So uh, in practice, you don't really reference this one much, but it's good to keep with you if you really need to know what, how the spec defines certain things, which we'll go through what those certain things are in due time. Yeah. Okay, now we get to what HTML really is. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So it was originally designed as like a markup language for documents uh, uh, very, very back in the days, like 1990s. Uh, back then, it was, uh, things were a lot simpler. They just needed to like have some form of markup for your document. Like they needed to denote that maybe this thing was a title, this thing was your heading, this thing was a paragraph and whatnot. So that was when the web uh, blew up. But after that, uh, at some point, they realized that the internet was going to be a thing, and then uh, they decided to build on top of HTML. So HTML uh, kept evolving uh, to different standards, HTML2, HTML3, blah, blah. Uh, currently, we are at HTML5, which is this logo, but as of, uh, yeah, as of HTML5, it's no longer like something that is fixed down to a version number. So even though this logo has like HTML5 to it, the HTML standard itself, right, is continuously, continually evolving. Like they are adding new things to the specification all the time. Uh, we will talk about what those things are very soon. Don't worry about it if it sounds confusing at this point. Yeah, but that is HTML. It's really like markup. It's a markup language for some kind of content. So this is an example of a HTML page. Uh, this is our NUS Hackers website. Uh, as you can see, if you want, we want to talk about content. Then we have an image here. We have links here. We have a title here. 
we have a, a summary sort of activities we have been holding. Uh, oh, our, our event today is right here. So this is what we call a HTML page. And uh, we'll be, to, for today's workshop, right, we'll be figuring out what goes under the hood or something like that. So if you are already experienced at HTML and CSS or even web development in general, uh, do note that this is an introductory workshop. So if you are already experienced with things like this, uh, I, this might not be the workshop for you. So if you would like to leave now, uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, uh, we, don't worry about it. We, we won't hold anything against you or what. If you feel that uh, you will not need this workshop today. Yeah. Okay, so but back to the topic. This thing is a HTML page and it's under the, underneath the hood. It actually is a document that is that contains like text like this. So let me zoom in a little. So this entire thing, like all this stuff, is actually the HTML document. It's actually a HTML document, and your browser looks at something like this, and then your browser is able to understand this document to render a page like. Oof, wait. To render a page like this. So. In a sense, this section, this part is a source for the previous HTML page over here. So now we can get started on a simple HTML document. So inside the link that I shared in the chat, right, we have some a file called simple page, simple dash page dot HTML, which is this file. So let me zoom in a little. Okay. You see this? Uh, does everyone have the same output as me for this file? Yeah, uh, Chris, are you able to see the... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm still loading it, but... Yeah, okay. It's not showing up in the browser thing. Yeah, it's a bit iffy. Yeah. Uh. Okay, uh, it's okay. For the sake of this workshop, I'm not sure what is going on. I'll fix it. Yeah. But let me open the file locally. Simple HTML simple page. Okay, this is how the file should have looked like. Uh, sorry for the mistake over here. This is how simple page.html should have looked like. Which is something like this over here. So let's go through like the contents of this document. Okay, firstly, we have like this line. Sorry. We have this line uh, dot type dot HTML. So this is a block that, this is a tag that declares that this is, the rest of this is going to be a HTML document. Uh, there are other doc types. I think the HTML spec should have it. I'm not quite sure where, but I think you could have like other XM, XML document, document and whatnot. But for this workshop, we'll be focusing only on doc type HTML. So this line is the start of declaring that the rest of this document is going to be a HTML document. Then, following that, yeah, oh, okay, there, there are links here, sorry, yeah. Following that, we have like this uh, HTML element. Uh, so this thing is a tag that says that this section is going to be like HTML and all the stuff in between it, uh, this is opening, this is an opening tag. This is a closing tag. That means all the stuff below, be, inside here is going to be uh, considered HTML. And then the next thing we have is a head. A head uh, holds like some, a head is where you can declare some metadata for your document. So for example, you could declare things like a title, uh, you could uh, links to certain styling sheets, which we'll talk about later. So for example, uh, in this, my local document, right? Uh, 
you can see that I have nothing in my head. So uh, earlier I mentioned you can declare a title, right? You can see my title is over here. It's just like a path to this file itself. So uh, if you don't specify a title, it defaults to this. So we'll go through a bit more about that later. So this thing is where you can put like, all sorts of metadata. And then this part is the body of your document. So the body is what you will actually see inside your, your document itself. So as an example, all these things will be inside the body of this website's HTML document. All this, okay, this is a very complicated page, uh, but all this will be inside the body as well. And similarly for the file that I just closed, this is, this is what I put in the body, like just, that's the only thing in the body and that's what shows in our page. Huh? So back to this. Uh, Ting Yan, if you rename the file to index, right, it shows up in the code sandbox. Oh, that's code. Oh, okay. Then that's, okay. I think I know what's the issue. Do I have to go here? Simple page.html. Does this work? Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. Uh, by default, this thing only this, this. Oh, I should mention that as well. Uh, index.html is a special name for a HTML document. If you don't specify like a particular page or you or a URI URL to go to, then it will default to index.html. So uh, in the exercise in the in the link that I sent, I didn't include an index.html. So uh, by default, it didn't show anything. So if I were to create an index.html here, and then say I copy pasted the content of simple page.html, and I save and I save it inside there. Then it should display there. Let's give it a try. Sorry for the, and I save it. Yep, it should update. Yeah, uh, thanks for catching that, Chris. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's how you use this page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, the body, as I was saying, the body is where your content goes. Uh, I believe, oh, right, sorry, let's go through this first. Uh, as we mentioned, we, we had the tags come in pairs. La. You start off like with an opening tag where is, you just specify the type of the tag you want. So for example, HTML, head, and a body. And then you should have a closing tag where you have something which is of the same, same type, but you have a slash in front. So in between is all the content. And then uh, we obviously we don't have anything in between head here, but this is like the open tag, opening tag of head, and then this is the closing tag for head. So uh, looks like I messed up the order of my slides, but it's still what I wanted to say. It contains like your page metadata, uh, title, as I mentioned earlier, linking to style sheets and whatnot. Uh, as always, MDN has comprehensive documentation on what head is. In fact, yeah, uh, MDN defines it as machine readable information. Yeah, metadata about your document and whatnot. So if you want to know like the details of something, MDN is probably like the best link on the internet you can to read about all this, other than the specification, but that's a little heavier. And body, which is the page contents. So now in between our body, we just have like hacker school, the start of recess week. Uh, if you're not from NUS, then uh, recess week is like this one week for us to catch up on all the mistakes we have made over the past six weeks. Uh, this is the only thing that's in our body so far. Uh, I think this is a mistake. I'm not sure about this. I'll figure it out later. So, but we could have a lot more complicated things in the body as we'll go through in detail later. So you might have noticed that we, we have this thing. And M percent a hash eight two three zero semicolon. Uh, this is a HTML entity. So these entities are used to for you to display like special characters like that would otherwise that aren't 
not easy to display otherwise. As in, uh, for example, in HTML, right, we, are, we have to use like uh, this greater than, this less than or greater than sign to denote like the start and end of a tag, of a single tag, right? And also like the slash. So sometimes they might interfere with the document itself. So to came up with that, right, uh, the specification has things called uh, entities, entities, Oh yeah, there's a reference chart here, right? These entities which have like uh, special codes here. Where is the one? Wait a minute. This isn't the right one. Let's see MDN. Okay, it's supposed to be this. Where is my... No, 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 it's okay, I'll just explain it. Uh, to denote special characters, uh, essentially. So I think this one should be... It should be ellipsis. Let's find out. Okay, yep. So this is... Uh, this one... 8230 is uh, an escape entity for uh, horizontal ellipses. So there's a bunch of them. The table here should have them, but I don't see the it. Yeah, it, uh, it's a little different. I'll update the link. Okay, but earlier, as we mentioned, now it's a very, very simple document. Clearly, this doesn't look like something like this or even like this, right? So they had, clearly there has to be a way to display more complex content. So we'll go through like some of the more generic elements first. So you can follow along by modifying simple page.html or you can add these elements via a document inspector. Uh, if you're following along, I think you can, you can use like index.html instead and then modify for it from there so that you don't have to specify like uh, file.html over here and you can just use index.html. So uh, let's talk about what the document inspector is first. Uh, on your browser, if you press F12, you, you should see a menu that looks like this. Uh, this thing is like, uh, it's an inspector console. Uh. It's a very powerful developer tool for you to inspect your HTML documents. So uh, this particular tab, let me zoom in a little. This particular tab uh, tells you about, it's for you to inspect like your HTML and it contains a lot of information. Like for example, a particular tag, you can select things by tags and whatnot. The rest of these are also for uh, inspecting things about your page itself, like the console deals with JavaScript, debugging for JavaScript, network, the request, and style, styling of the page itself, and a bunch of others. Uh, we'll not go through them today. We'll mainly focus on the inspector today. So depending on what browser you are, I think Chrome, F12 should work on Chrome as well. Maybe different if you're on a Mac, or if you're using Safari, you need to click on one of the menus at the top to open like a developer tools or something like that. Yeah. So uh, over here, they have like the HTML document. Let's open it in this actually, so there's less noise. Uh, I don't need this. Yeah. Now, uh, you, as you can see in this section, this is the HTML that we've written for simple page.html. Uh, if we can click on this icon over here to add a new node. And for Firefox, the behavior is to insert like a div. Now, if we highlight, if we mouse over this div, right, it should kind of highlight it in our page, uh, uh, but where this div is in our document itself. So uh, I, I don't want to move my cursor, but you can see that it's not taking up much space is 
just along that line below the below hackers put any D start of recess quick. So we can actually modify this to some other tag by double clicking on it and then just typing it into what we want. So for example, if I wanted it to be a P, a P tag, it will update to a P. And you kind of saw that now there's some yellow color. Uh, that's the margin, which I'll explain later as well. So back to the slide. So now, yeah, yeah. Pressing this plus, as mentioned earlier, will give you like the new node. And then you're able to double click and then edit. Then when you're done, press enter. It will take a while. Uh, it took like a second for me to update like the div to a paragraph. So let's talk about this div element. Okay, this yeah, uh, div, right, and span, these are two of the most generic elements for content. So the, literal, the div literally stands out for like divider, stands for divider, and it's for you to divide your content. So it's for you, generally, but you probably don't want to be using like div la, to divide your content all the way. As we mentioned right at the start, right? HTML is for you to mark up your document. So when you use text, right? You, you, there are special text that actually give your document some semantic meaning. La. So for example, you have text like P to denote that something is a paragraph, uh, main to de denote that it's like the main content of the page an article to be more that it's like a single article. So for example, in a simple page like this, uh, this isn't a very good example. Uh, maybe in like, for example, Straits Times, right? You would have like, you, you use this article tag to denote an article and then headers and footers. Let's see if I have a more complicated slide here. Yeah, something like, maybe something like for this page, right? Something like this, uh, nav bar at the top could be considered your header and this tiny little powered by mark buying over here could be considered your footer. So there's a whole bunch of this to give semantic meaning to your document. Uh, some, uh, there's a link guide here. Let's hope the link is updated this time. Ah, yes. Which gives a uh, little more details about using HTML to structure your content. So as an example, if we go back to like over here and then we add, let's say we were to, to add this as a paragraph. So let's say I wrap this in a paragraph tag and save. Uh, okay, you saw like a minor visual difference. You saw like a minor visual difference, but uh, don't be fooled by that. Marking out your content isn't about making a visual difference. It's about giving it meaning to your article. So it just happens that the default for like this browser, this little tiny little browser over here was to give it like more margins in between. But then uh, one thing that I want to make clear is all these are just to mark up your document and not for you to like add headings to your content. We'll do that later via CSS. Okay. This. Yeah, so MTN has a pretty comprehensive guide on this. So there's a, re there's a question of why you want to use all these semantic elements. The first thing is accessibility. So consider that uh, sometimes you might have read users who are maybe, maybe they are visually impaired. So they can't really like look at the page itself. In that case, they have to de depend on uh, things like screen readers which will scan through like the HTML document itself and tell them what, uh, what's, what's inside that document, for example. So uh, if you're using like div, div, div for every single thing in your page, right, then the screen reader wouldn't really be able to interpret like where's the important part, uh, where's, the, where's the news article and what's, what sort of things like that, right? And the second is like search engine optimization. So web crawlers, right, are optimize to crawl your page for crawl your HTML for like specific things. Lah. So if it's all like this, 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 the web crawler can't really tell like what's important, what's not important, right? So with this semantic elements, you can denote what is in, what's, the, what's what in this document. And really is to convey that the type of the data is carrying. Lah. So now that we have some 
ah, this is a strange order, but okay, let me talk about it. <laughs> okay, now well, we talk about the semantic elements. This one, I, to me, I guess it counts as a semantic element, yeah. I'm not sure if it's defined as one, but it does give like meaning to your document, right, as with a title. So the title tag, usually you put it into the head tag, as we mentioned. Uh, we don't have a head here, or oh, rather we have an invisible head here, which we should have specified. Let's delete this and then try to insert something. Okay, they, it's not letting me insert. Let me go to this. So we, we have a head here, but we have nothing here. We can insert like the metadata here, so which is like a title. Uh, let's give this a title. Uh, give me a moment, sorry. Uh, no, 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 I mean, no, sorry. Uh, sorry about that, yeah. So uh, we can call this like simple page, simple intro page. I, I'm not sure if anything will show in this browser. Yeah, I don't think anything shows. But now you have denote, now you have like declared that the title of this document is like simple intro page. So this title is what is shown in like the tab title, which is all these tabs over here. So all these things over here are like tab title, the titles of your document, sorry. And it's also what we show in the search engine. Now, then we have different heading elements like for HTML, I think it goes from only from H1 to H6. So let me demo what all these are. So yeah, H, you have a H1 tag and then this is what a heading one looks like. Let me copy a few times. So a H2 would be something like this. Yeah, ignore the content in between. We just want to see the headings. So this is a heading one, heading two, heading three. And these are for you to denote like the different headings, the, the level of the content in your document. Uh, by default, you can see the browser makes like smaller headings uh, go smaller. But as, as mentioned again, uh, this is just the default styling that your browser applies. So don't worry too much about how it looks at this point. You are able to completely control it, how it looks using CSS. Uh, yeah, uh, this isn't you, much. Yeah, sorry. Can you drag the zoom thing on the right hand side somewhere else? It's a bit distracting. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it's a Linux thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so the Zoom is supposed to hide itself, right? But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with that. La. But that, as in that, that box thingy, you can just like drag it to the corner or something. I, I can't, I can't. I'm not sure why. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. sorry, yeah, sorry everyone if it's distracting. I, maybe I should have done this on Windows. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh... Yeah, yeah, you can use. Okay, for now we have a paragraph and it's exactly what it sounds like. It denotes like a paragraph of the content. So maybe in this example, and uh, in fact, we already did it. We could have labeled this as a paragraph. And now there's a note over here. Uh, BR, this tag BR is a break. So uh, BR should demand, sh should denote like a semantic break, right? So let me copy like BR into here and then save it. Now you can see that now, sorry for the mistake, it's on a new line. Because what BR does is it's a line, it's kind of a break. Uh, but uh, in general, you shouldn't be using like BR to break inside a paragraph manually unless it's absolutely necessary. Instead, consider for an example like this, what, maybe you might want to put it in a new paragraph instead. Rather, so as always, this part is all about considering what your content should be. So maybe you want something like this instead of putting a BR inside your paragraph. 
uh, uh, we have list, which is similar to like most like word processors. So you can have ordered and unordered list. You can denote like, for example, does this work here? U L. Oh, it works. Okay. List one, list two, list three. So U L denotes like the start of an unordered list. Where you, you do have, you don't need any order to them. So they you just use by default, your browser uses like bullet points to denote list. Of course, you're able to change them. In fact, let's talk about an example. Do you think like this menu over here, file edit selection view go help? This could be like a list of like menu options, right? So I'm not sure if they are actually using a list for this part, but then can you see how like semantically, right? This thing is a list of menu options. And in fact, this is like a sub list of like many options for help. So this one would be, I guess it's also an unordered list, even though it's declared in this specific order. So you can have ordered list as well. And for ordered list, your browser defaults to using numbers like one, two, and three. You're able to change this. You're able to style this as well to, I think Roman numerals and there's a bunch of others. So, one thing that should be clear by now is uh, styling can be controlled. <laughs> yeah, and for you for the list items inside, you use li to denote like a list item. So that's it to list. It's a straightforward thing as it should be. <laughs> now, you can, of, of course, you should have known that you can have links to other things. So you can link to other pages, for example. Uh, so it's an anchor, the, the tag is an anchor. The sorry, the element is an anchor. And you use A to denote an anchor. And you have to specify a property like a href, which is the reference. So in this example, uh, it's a little small here, but let me use this as an example. Okay, so this one is a anchor to Google. And if you, you can see here in my developer tool, developer tools, it, it's like, it's just a href to HTTPS, a protocol, and then google.com. And then inside the tag, I put like what I want this link to be, the, the name of this link. Uh. So I just call it Google, which should give me a link to Google. So this is how you declare a link, a reference to some other, some other, document i guess yeah now this thing inside is an attribute so attributes are really straightforward uh this first part is the attribute name so uh for the anchor element href is a special attribute name which lets your browser know what is referring to and this part over here is the attribute value so all of these attributes right they come in like attribute name and attribute value pairs. And there is a whole bunch of them. Uh, I think there, there are some that are default for all HTML elements, like class, ID, and whatnot. And href is a special one for anchor elements. So, uh, apparently I didn't include uh, a link to like the attributes. Uh, I'll update the slides and I'll update the slides for them. Okay. Now, but of course, we can't be like just displaying like text, 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 text with heading, list, and whatnot, right? So HTML should allow us to display like richer content, like for example, images, and we, we can display images through like the image tag. So for image, you have a special attribute as well called uh, SRC, which stands for source. So this is the source, and then this is the value of the source in this example is like the Google logo. So this would be uh, an image with IMG and then source of this results in like this example over here. Um, I wouldn't open the developer tools for this one. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, maybe I should have mentioned earlier is that some texts right, are self-closing. So in the example over here, we have, uh, we have like text that are always like have an opening like H6 and then we have a closing tag H6 over here. But really certain texts like image, 
can be self-closing like IMG. This would be valid. You don't need a slash IMG like that. Uh, I think earlier we had the example of a break, right? Like a BR. So these are self-closing tags. So you don't need to specify the closing tag. Uh, and what some people like to do to denote that it's a self-closing tag is they put a slash at the end to denote that this is a tag that closes by itself. Yep, should have mentioned that earlier. So, yep. And in fact, if you try to close it manually using like slash IMG, it's actually invalid HTML. Lah. So the proper terminology is for this is a void element, apparently not self-closing. Yeah, I guess that's what the spec would call it. But of course, we have seen, we are, of course we are able to combine elements. So now let's say we put like this image, in, this image element inside an anchor element. Then it will actually still have an image, but then this image would also be a link to google.com. So I can actually click on this image and then it will link me to google.com. And in fact, we have already been doing a lot of this, right? Like for example, we have been placing like LIs inside OL, we have been placing uh, all these headings and paragraphs inside body. So this is exactly what your HTML is. It forms like an entire structure from all these uh, text inside text, inside text, inside text. <coughs> yeah. So you come up with complex like HTML pages by com combining all these primitives together. Now, uh, let's have a short exercise. So, uh, I've technically already included the answer, which is inside the folders. But if you like, you can, we can have uh, Chris. How much time do we? How are we doing on time? Uh, we are one forty-three now, so it's a uh, forty-three minutes past the start. Okay. Uh, can we have a quick five minutes to replicate? like this screenshot over here. Yeah, if you'd like to follow through. So I would, for me, if I'm looking at this, this would probably be a heading one. This could be a paragraph. This would be a link. This could be a heading two, heading three, heading three. And this is an ordered list. And this is an ordered list. Yep, I think that's it. Yeah, so we can have like four minutes to look at this. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions at this point, please feel free to ask in the chat. Okay, there's a question where the file is. Uh, I'll send the link to the code box again in the chat for everyone. Yeah. So right now, we are at an exercise where we are trying to, <coughs> sorry, we are trying to recreate this uh, screenshot using HTML.
Yeah, uh, we'll go, we'll try this out for another two minutes. Also, I fix my Zoom annoying panel. Oh yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention is how to open files in uh, VS Code. So if you are new to VS Code, like you have just downloaded it. Uh, one thing you can do is you launch VS Code and then you press like file and then open file or the, you can use the shortcut Control O and then you can open the file from there. Or if you are creating the file from scratch, then you can have file and new file. And then <clears throat> inside there, you can press, you can change the language mode by pressing Control Shift P, and then you type language. Uh, it shows you a keyboard shortcut for it as well, if you like that. Then change the language mode to HTML. Alternatively, you can create like a new file You can create a new file and then type the file name like uh, index.html as an example. Uh, I already have one, so it doesn't let me do that. I'll type like example.html, press enter, and then it will give me a HTML document. If you are <coughs> interested in like some shortcuts, uh, pressing exclamation mark and then pressing tab should give you like some of the a skeleton for working with HTML documents. So yeah, just now Jing said you can change the language, right? You can change it at the bottom, this button over here as well. This ah, yeah. uh, language has, button there. Yeah, Chris yeah. has highlighted it over there. So you can click on it as well and then change it from there to HTML. So yeah, that's a like quick, very quick crash course. Okay, uh is the time time is yeah. Uh for that quick workshop, for the quick exercise one, right? Uh I think we can move on from there. Let's Quickly go through the solution for that and what is going on? Uh, can you all see my screen? Can, can see. Yeah, uh, sorry, my screen is kind of frozen. Let me... Okay, sorry about that. It should be... Yeah. So for exercise one, uh, as expected, we have like the we have a HTML document. Inside it, we have a head and a body. In this example, it's a simple one, so we only have a title, which I titled exercise one. Uh, it's okay if you didn't do this one. Yeah. Inside the body, for me, I decided to use like H1, heading one for the exercise one. Actually, let me open this. Yeah, I decided to use exercise one for this part. Uh, sorry, heading one for this part. Uh, heading two for a section, and then heading trees for the subsection one and subsection two. Uh, I placed this in a paragraph, and then I had a link to NUS hackers. Uh, and uh, for this part, I use an unordered list of two items and an ordered list. So that's a quick like refresher of the few elements that we have covered so far. Uh, maybe images, but I didn't put that in this example. So that's like it for HTML, but there's a lot of other content, like a lot of other text that I didn't cover within these slides itself. So of course, uh, you're able to embed things like 
videos, you can embed other things like all sorts of other rich content, uh, videos, uh, audio, like sound clips, and your browser will be able to recognize them. Or uh, even, let's see, oh yeah, you can even embed like web pages inside web pages using something called an iframe. So in fact, in our slides earlier, right, uh, we, I had this example of like uh, this web page, right, which is uh, our NUS Hackers homepage. This is actually an, our entire NUS Hackers homepage, like the links actually work and everything that I've embedded inside this presentation. Now. And in fact, this entire presentation, which you probably can tell from like the .html over here, is actually done using HTML and CSS and also JavaScript. So you can, there, there's a lot of things that you can embed inside like a HTML document. So even though we only went through like some straightforward examples in our intro workshop today, keep in mind that HTML pages are very, very complex. In fact, let's, uh, I have a Google Doc over here. Uh, I shouldn't really be showing it, but consider something like a Google, Google Docs, right? That's a really complex page. Um, I'm not even sure they are using like HTML. It could be an entire canvas there. Yeah. Now, I think it's about time we go to like CSS, which stands for cascading style sheets. Uh, the style sheets part, the style part should be straightforward. CSS is used to style your, your document. The sheets part refers to the fact that you can like div divide your style, styling into like different sheets and then like ap or apply them all to the same document or even apply them to one sheet to different documents. Uh. And the cascading styles refer to how the rules of CSS works, which is like it will cascade downwards so that everything below it should get a, everything more specific than something should get uh, affected by it. So CSS came a little after uh, HTML in 1994. Uh, the current specification is like at CSS3 as well, but this is also a lie. Like, they are still adding stuff to the point where, um, and once again, MDN has everything and it's pretty comprehensive. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't find a link where they have like all the CSS properties, but we'll go through that later, I guess. Yeah. So before we get into like the CSS, CSS, right? The sheets part of CSS, let's consider inline styling. Huh? So you can like directly apply styling to something. So as an example, I have a paragraph over here. If I use the style attribute and then I give it something like, uh, I declare the property color to blue, it should result in blue text. So uh, this thing over here, once again, is similar to attributes, but these things, we call them like properties, CSS properties. The left one is like the property, and then the right side is the, which can, this example is blue, is like the value. So uh, we have a lot of properties. Uh, I can straight up tell you now that I don't know a good amount of the stuff over here. Uh, like. Huh. Yeah, yeah, what even is... Okay, I, I've never seen carrot color before. I would assume it is the, the color of what have... A uh, carrot? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen like clamp before. Yeah, but as you can see, this is a lot of properties. And you have a lot of control over like the CSS itself. So for today's intro workshop, why is this thing back here? For today's intro workshop, we are only going through like um, the more common properties. Uh, but if you're interested, definitely do look up at like the comprehensive list that was given. Because you, you really can control all your CSS. In fact, this presentation itself, right, as I mentioned, is a HTML document, right? And then if you try to like view this presentation without any CSS, this is what it should look like. So I think these were my navigation buttons. Yeah, they are. Uh, but this is how it looks like without any, oh, sorry, with only like the default styling applied to my, my browser. So it took like a fair bit of CSS so that this presentation looks like what it is now. Yeah. So we have col uh, color, which we already went through. It changed like the color of the text, the background, which is exactly what it will sound like. Bond, same. Okay, border, 
padding and margin is interesting. Uh, we'll cover the box model very soon. So I think this time I wouldn't like try to jump ahead. But yeah, uh, you can try them out. Okay, yeah, we're covering the box model right now. So uh, every element, like, yeah, element in CSS, HTML, right, uh, has some kind of, it, it's contained in a, some kind of box. La. And then this box, right, uh, in fact, let me open the developer tools right now. Uh, you can see the box model over here. So let me select an arbitrary element, like maybe this. And this is how, yeah, this is the H2 that I've selected. Uh, this box has like zero padding. And then the, the padding is what is like inside the content as well. Uh, sorry, that doesn't sound very clear. So you, the padding is like the space inside the inside the box and then the margin is like the space you want the margin which is the yellow color part is the spacing that you want outside the box so in this example of our h2 we don't have any padding we also clearly don't have any borders and we have a bottom margin of 20. Uh, let's actually try modifying it now so let's try to apply like some styling to it. So you can actually, when you select something, uh, the details of its styling show up in this panel and uh, you can apply like temporary modifications to the styling. Uh, so let's say I wanted to give this like a border of maybe pink and then Hey. Is that the right order, Chris? For the All right. hand? Yeah. Okay, why is it not showing my styling? Okay, maybe that's an example. I should always go for something more straightforward in a workshop. Let's have <laughs> style equals to uh, border hot pink. Uh, then the size, right? Yeah, okay. You can see now we have like applied a border styling to it. So the border is, is the border out or in by default or does it depend? I think uh, it depends, right? Yeah, I think it depends also. Uh, this style of CSS is <coughs> a bit unclear. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm not very really sure about the CSS specs. So if I wanted to know more about this, right, what I would do is I would go to read like MDN, like I would search for a border on it, and then I would read about the details, which I'm sure MDN will cover. So, uh, so it's bound to be here, Anna. Yeah, about whether a border should be considered inside or outside the box. Yeah, and the margin is something that's outside the box. So back to maybe I'll apply like margin uh, 50 pixels. So yeah, now we have like a huge margin around this entire paragraph to the point where it looks almost centered. Yeah. So, oh right. So you can see like the border, if we, we, did, we didn't apply like padding, let's do padding uh, five pixels. Yeah. So you can see like, the padding is like inside, right? And then please don't do that. The padding is like inside along with like the content and then you have the border and then you have like this margin outside, which is like the spacing outside. Now let's get back to like the sheets part of CSS. Consider that sometimes we might want to apply like a lot of styles, right? A lot we have a lot of elements and we want them to have all the same styles. What can we do? In that case, right, we can apply, like, we can have, we can specify styles for specific things. But, and by specific things, I mean, you have a lot of brand new, you have a lot of control over how specific you want to go. So something like this I would I apply to all P. So this is like a selector, you select P and then you, you declare that 
I want all the styles between these curly, these curly braces to apply to all paragraphs. So in this example, this should, this should uh, have be all blue text for all these paragraphs. So apparently I skip ahead again. Yeah, this thing is called selector again. And then this curly brace, the stuff inside this curly brace, including this curly brace, sorry, is the declaration block where you can declare all the styling you want for uh, what you have selected. And this is an example of a single declaration, color blue. So as I mentioned, you have a lot of control over what you want to select. So sometimes you can select by attributes. For example, if you have an ID attribute, yes, attribute, you have an ID attribute, like you, you decide to call this specific paragraph, right? My dash P, you can select it by the ID using this uh, pound sign. So pound my ID, and then you can apply some styling there. Uh, for classes, you can have like a class attribute and then to, so in this example, right, we declare like that we want the styles from these two classes to apply to this paragraph and we can create classes using like a dot. So uh, as an example, dot red would be creating like a class called red, dot em would be creating like a class dot em, like dot em. And then these two styles, since we specify that <clears throat> they apply to this paragraph, it will, also, will all come up to form like a bold red paragraph. So we have covered like text, which is like a P, and ID, which is a very uh, the most specific one. I'll cover specificity later. Classes. Uh, this star here is a wildcard. It means it selects like all elements. So the styling inside there would apply if I had like uh say, say i had like a style tag over here and then <clears throat> i decided to star let's give it something obnoxious like color equals to uh line green and then i save it i i should expect most of the stuff inside here to turn to lime green and in fact i think all of it does <clears throat> so this star is to, for you to select things that apply to everything. Uh, this is often used when you want to apply like something to your entire document. So for example, if you wanted your font family to be sans serif instead, <clears throat> then, sorry about that, uh, you could apply it to your entire document. So it will be sans serif. And of course you can select by attributes so to do uh recall that we have like attributes and then to select things for attributes you put them inside the square brackets and then the attribute and then you can specify you can declare styles for it but of course that's like still very cost brain control right you you can select specific elements by id by classes maybe so Another thing you can do is by combining different selectors. So as an example, something like this tag dot class will select like tag elements of a specific class. So maybe example, let's say the tag I put P and then the class I put like uh, maybe dot main, then I will be selecting all the paragraphs with main. Uh, this one also straightforward. Uh, you have like two classes, two different class styles that have two different classes class one and class two. So uh, this one, class one, comma, class two, will select elements that are class one or class two. So remember that this is an and, and then this is an or. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, uh, yeah. But once again, right, in this example, I created like, I had a style tag and then I placed the styling inside this tag. But sometimes you want to be able to like reuse styles and also you don't really want like the details of your styling to pollute your HTML document, which by right should really represent what your document is, right? Uh, in practice, it's not the case. I wonder if I press, if I view the page source of this page, how complex it would be. It actually, oh yeah, this is a JavaScript app, so it doesn't show it that 
way. But this is probably a very complicated page. And ideally, you don't want like all these styles to like pollute the HTML document itself. So what you can do is you create a HTML, sorry, a CSS file itself. So in this example, I had, let's not use that actually. Let's create our own file example.css and say I wanted I wanted to move all the styles here inside example.css uh, maybe not lime green uh, yellow this time now obviously the styling would apply to this Sorry. <coughs> yeah. Obviously, the styling from there wouldn't apply to this document yet. So recall that earlier at the start, I said that head contains metadata, and we can contain a, we can consider like a style sheet. To be. Metadata. Uh. What's the syntax, Chris? A link rel equals rel, to the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, type equals. Yeah. We declare that it's a style sheet, and it's a, the file is of like CS. It's like a CSS file. Type equals to text slash CSS, and then we have like a reference to the file itself. So let me just copy this actually. Link rel equals to. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Go away, go away. Okay, uh, type equal text CSS. I didn't call it example. I call it example CSS. So if this goes well, our text should be a horrible yellow now. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Great. Yes, it's a horrible yellow. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> okay, but yeah, <laughs> now we have like, uh, we have, we have removed, we have moved the styling into like a specific style sheet. And your HTML document remains very much about the content with a link to a style sheet. And all the styling, styling behavior <coughs> sorry about that, is inside like this style sheet. So that's what a style, uh, moving it to a style sheet is. So now we have hit like exercise two. So uh, we haven't covered too many things, but I think now is a good time for you to experiment. Uh, you can try recreating this screenshot, which the answer should probably be inside like dot uh, ex2 dot html. Yeah, it, yeah, it actually is. But in that case, uh, if you don't want to recreate this page, you can try experimenting with different styling. Like you open. You can open uh, you can open MDN and then <clears throat> click on something that sounds interesting and see whether you can apply it to your own styling. So maybe we can have five minutes for this. Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, of course, if any questions, really feel free to ask in the chat. Okay, there's a question in the chat. Uh, what's the difference between a P element and a BR element? So a P denotes a paragraph. Uh, and paragraph is exactly what it sounds like, like a paragraph of content, like uh, maybe a paragraph from an essay. And the BR denotes a break, so, uh, which is like a line break. Like imagine you press enter somewhere. 
Yeah, uh, does that clarify it for you, Rian? So maybe as an example, say we have a paragraph. Uh, can BR be BR? Okay, firstly, BR is like one of the void elements that we covered at the start. So, uh, 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 for those, right, you don't do BR slash BR in this way. You simply have like just a BR. Uh, what do you mean it, it can, can it be used like a paragraph? Uh, no, BR is like a line break. So imagine like, uh, say we have some text, right? Like we have, <clears throat> lorem ipsum we have like a paragraph of content right and then a br is like at some point i just went there and i decided okay i want to press i want to have a break there <coughs> yep Okay, uh, I'll have like maybe two, two more minutes to mess around with CSS. Actually, I'm going to mess around myself. Yep, it's what Chris said. Okay, I think I'll <coughs> I'll go on with the workshop. So uh, one thing that I didn't cover right to start off was like the styling of the font. So maybe you might have experimented with that. But in any case, let's go through like uh, a solution. Not the, uh, you could have come up with a different way and it works. So this is exercise two .html. And this is what <coughs> was 
intended for you to come up with. So firstly, uh, you might have styled it in line, like you created a style tag inside here. Or maybe you might have uh, applied it like to individual elements. I think for this workshop, either is fine. Uh, it would have been nice to, of course, it would be nice to have extracted it out into its own CSS file and then included it as well. But uh, the ex this exercise is really to see whether you are able to apply like styling. So uh, this is uh, one sample solution that, yeah, sorry, please. So you, you want to show them how to like import a new Google font or something since there's an example yeah, over I'm, here. I'm going through that right okay. now. Yeah, sure. So we didn't cover like importing the font. So uh, I was intending for it to be like a little experimenting. So this is how you, uh, sorry. Uh, there are fonts, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Your browser, your your system, right? Only comes with certain fonts by default. But as you have been browsing around the internet, you probably have realized that some places have like really fancy fonts that you are very sure that you don't have. So obviously, somewhere somehow it has to be loaded from somewhere, and this is how you specify like. This is, or rather, this is one way that you can specify importing of specific fonts into your styling so that you are able to use them. So this statement, uh, add import, and then you specify that it's a URL, allows you to import something from, import something. Okay, I can't move that one. So that you are able to use it. So in this example, we are importing a font from Google. So there's actually, Google actually has this thing called Google Fonts, where they have a lot of like freely licensed fonts that you are able to freely use in your own web page. Uh, <coughs> some of it is really, really nice. And so all of these are fonts that are like provided by people and then available on fonts.google.com that you are allowed that you're able to use freely in your own website. Lah. Like some of them are very common. Uh, in our example, we use Montserrat, which is this font to style for exercise two, uh, one of the more popular ones. So this is what Montserrat looks like. So after importing this, right, we are able to change what our font is through like this property, font family. So notice the comma over here, uh, Montserrat comma, Sun serif. Uh, for font family, right? If you hover over it, right, you can see that it specifies a prioritized list of font family names of generic family names. So a user agent iterates through the list of family names until it matches an available font. So what that means, right, is you're allowed to specify like multiple fonts over here, and then the the user agent will try to go through this list and then find the first and then apply the font that matches the earliest. So if I were to specify something like a real over here, which I believe I have installed, <coughs> it should, it should like start at a real and then notice that I have a real and it applies the a real style to my, yeah, the a real style and it, it stops there. So if I try something like non-existent font, it should fail. And then you try to go for the next one, which should be Montserrat. So it should fall to Montserrat. And in practice, you probably uh, would like to apply like multiple fonts to a certain page. <clears throat> let's find an example, maybe GitHub. So let's see what GitHub does for something. Uh, let's see, let's select this. Okay, where's the font? <coughs> So, <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah, so I selected, I think I selected this uh, element in GitHub. And then this is the font family rules for this specific element. So it starts off from like this thing, dash Apple system. This is a special keyword, I believe, to specify that, try to use the Apple system font if available. <coughs> I don't have that, so it's not selecting that. And then the next one is Blink Mac system font. 
which I also don't have because I'm not on a Mac. So it falls to the next one, which is Seagull UI. Uh, you can see that this is the one that's uh, being used for my browser because it's underlying over here. Uh, I believe Seagull UI is a Windows phone. I'm not sure why I have it installed. And then there's a bunch of others, Helvetica, Area, Sun Serif, blah, 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 blah. So uh, this is just one example of how GitHub does it. You can see a whole list of like fonts. I think, yeah, I think Seagull UI is win, uh, a Windows system font. So it will like, so from what GitHub is doing, they are trying to go for like the system fonts first so that it looks like, it looks more native. Uh, sometimes people don't, of course, people don't do that all the time. Sometimes you can have like really crazy fonts. Um, please still have an example of a, of a website that insists on their own font. Wow, I can't think of one at the top of my head. Sure, sure, sure. But, but you sure. can always, yeah, you can always just import like some ugly font from Google font into your, uh, into your thingy, then you will show how. Please don't, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you can change like this URL to something that you, you are more interested in and then you can apply the font over here, it will look yeah. exactly like what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, this one, four, yeah, I should move on, yeah. So, uh, right, we were talking about selectors. Uh, actually, I guess the, I should have covered, okay, no. Sorry, yeah, we can combine selectors. Uh, earlier, let me go back again for a while, sorry. Yeah, this is also kind of like combining selectors, right? In a, in the sense that you have something that is a tag and then you have something that is a class in this example. But other than that, you can specify, you can go even more specific. Like you can, for your CSS, you can match things that are descendants, for example. So in this example, uh, you have X, then you have a space and then a Y, uh, no comma in between or anything, note, note that. So what this one would, this one would match, right? It's like all the y's that are a descendant of x. So let's see if there's a simple example for this HTML2. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess this isn't a very complicated document. So maybe if we had like a div and then we had a span, uh, this and a p. Uh, then you can see some kind of nesting here, a, a, a P inside, a paragraph inside a span, inside a div. We will be able, if we had like a styling, we would be able to select it like div span P. And then apply Sure. Yeah, so this will be, this will only apply to like paragraphs that are inside spans that are inside divs. Or you can have a direct child. A direct child means that it has to be like the next level inside uh the next level from x the y has to be the next level from x so in this example we have three levels a div span p right if i remove this span i'm quite sure this styling will still apply to this example text let me save this file so yeah it still applies but then uh if i had specified that i want p paragraphs that are direct descendants of a div it should fail, it shouldn't apply to this example text over here because it's not a direct descendant, right? It's like you have a span and then you are the descendant of the span. So instead of like directly descending from div, you have like a parent in between. So if I do this, example text should not, yeah, should no longer be a blue. And if I were to change this to span, Spans that are direct descendants, 
the, the styling should apply because this paragraph is inside the span as well. Let's see if it does. Yep. So this uh, greater than sign is for direct descendants. Or this tilde to match something that is directly after an X. So let's have a more complicated example. For, I don't think this would work. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say I have a div and then I have a h3, h3 example, example h3, yep. It, it should be, it should match, right? Match a y that is directly after, oh, right, sorry. Yeah, h3. <laughs> Yeah, so it's directly after. And then, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is after and plus is directly after. So if I change this tilde to a plus now, this blue, blue styling should only apply to example H3 and not subsection two. So yeah, let's save the document. And then, yeah, subsection two is direct, sorry, example H3 is directly after a div over here. But subsection two is quite a bit away from the div. Therefore, it, it doesn't apply to subsection two. Yeah. Uh, this will take like a bit of practice to get used to. Uh, as you can tell, I haven't memorized them except for maybe this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, going back to like div and span, right? We had we mentioned that like these are like generic containers. Like div is a generic block level, which means it takes an entire block uh, by default. Of course, you can uh, uh, you can override the styling and span is like an inline element. So they have no meaning. We have, we have said that we have aesthetically said already, but what they are useful for is you can use them, you can wrap things inside them and then you apply the CSS to them. So you can ha have, and then this is where like IDs and classes come in, which I don't know why I haven't covered yet, but okay. <laughs> and besides that, we have like pseudo classes, like, which allow you to select your elements when they are in a certain state. So for example, you probably have seen like something where if you hover over it, uh, what's a good example? You have a you have a list of items that you only want to style the last chore. Yeah. So as this example, right? For hover, it's probably like hover over here, and then you can see this thing. Uh, focus when something is selected. Like for example, if you had some kind of uh input. Let's see, does that work? Yeah. So when it's focused, when you're selected on it, uh, specific nth last of type, where you can select the nth element of the same type among siblings and a bunch of this. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna go through this for now, but we'll do instead we'll do them in the exercise. Uh. Okay, fine, I'll go through them. So you can accept an argument in parentheses. So over here, you can see that you can you have the parentheses, right? You can specify an, an argument now. So the argument can be like odd, which means like you select like the odd elements, the odd numbered elements are. So you alternate and then even, which is the opposite, or something of the form that is a n plus b, where a and b are like some numbers. And then this is a, I think I remember this is a multiplier. Yeah, uh, yeah I have to go through that again. We'll, we'll try it out later. So as an example of using like the nth of odd, right? So in this one, you have like nth of type odd. So you're selecting the odd ones 
and then it's also not the first of the type. Then you are applying background color of AAA, which it should be A should be some gray. Yeah, it should be some kind of gray. So uh, just from looking at this ends of type odd, it should select all the odd numbered rows. So like one, three, five, seven, but then also something that is not the first of type. So the first odd number row, the first row shouldn't have this style applied. So if I click on the demo, I should expect to see like some kind of table and then the first row shouldn't have any gray applied to it, but then the odd number ones should be gray. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, yeah, so this is the example. So the first row is not, not of the first, right? We had this, we had this, we specified that it's not the first. And then this is the second row. It doesn't have gray applied to it. This is the third row. It has gray, fourth, no, fifth, yes, or the odd, odd number rows. So now exercise three, and of course the answer is given, but you can try to modify the table so that the colors invert when you hover over the table. And this is actually, it's quite powerful that CSS can do this, like uh, styling logic on certain events like hovering. So you, you wouldn't actually need any code for this. And you probably want, and since you're inverting the colors, meaning like now the odd ones should go to should go to like white and the even one should go to gray. You probably want to use like not as well and then hover. So I'll leave, I'll leave it on this slide. And then y'all can, uh, I guess we can have five minutes or maybe, yeah, seven minutes for this. So we'll at 240, yeah, to try out this table one. It should be a fun exercise, even though the answer is there, <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, any questions, just say in the chat.
actually the silence is making me a little awkward. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions or anything? <laughs> Okay, uh, there's a question in the chat. How do I create the next big Facebook website with HTML and CSS? So the answer for that is uh, HTML and CSS alone for, is not enough for creating like something like Facebook because you have a lot of like behavior, right? Like you, you, sh you shouldn't be, like if you think about the stuff we have covered so far, uh, we have created very static pages. So, but with something like Facebook, right? It, it's not like a, co a giant collection of static pages. It's a lot of like pages that are generated from dynamic content. So wait, Chris asked that question. <laughs> okay, but I'll continue answering. Seriously answer. <laughs> uh, I'll continue okay. answering it seriously. <laughs> la. So something like HTML and CSS alone shouldn't be enough to create uh, some an application like Facebook. La. Because Facebook isn't just like a web page anymore, right? It's, an entire web application. So you will probably want, uh, you probably need something like JavaScript or maybe uh, if your app didn't need JavaScript, uh, you, you, you will need some kind of like server to serve generated web pages from the back. So uh, and unfortunately, uh, maybe if I had time, I'm not sure I do, but if I had time, I would try to cover uh, like a bit of JavaScript at the end because uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are like the three big intro technologies to the to like the web lah. So in this intro workshop, we only cover HTML and CSS, but we did uh, we didn't plan for like JavaScript. But we should have several JavaScript workshops in the future. Yeah, uh, we are having a React one coming out soon. I think later Jing Yan will just briefly talk about it, and um. I think the underlying concept is the same. Uh. No matter whether your website is static or whether it's like a generated website like Facebook or like uh, Straits Times or whatsoever, the underlying concept is that it still makes use of HTML and CSS and that's like the building block of, of the like the internet and your web browser. So yeah, this is still pretty important. Right back to you, Ting Yen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Uh... Let's quickly go through like the answer for exercise three. So uh, what was intended was you hover over it and then the columns will change color, but the first one should like stay as some kind of like heading. So actually this is quite trippy. Ooh. Okay, so First, you can specify that uh, your styling when you are not hovering over it should be of this one, which is what was given in the example. Uh. Then after that, when you are hovering over it, this, this selector and this styling should apply to it. So uh, it's, it's a very simple example, but you can see how uh, with CSS alone, you were able to implement something that like changes on some event, right? Like a hovering event. And of course, 
we we haven't talked about events much about this. We only like only mentioned about like hover or what, right? But you you probably kind of have the idea that there, there are a lot of events going on in your browser, and then you are able to respond to them. So as an example, hover is one of them. Uh, I think focus is another one. There should be a bunch more. Yeah. Okay. And finally, finally, we get to uh, CSS inheritance. Yeah. Sorry. Can you just go back to the exercise three example just now, the <laughs> code sandbox? Yeah, yeah. So I think just now we didn't really touch on it, but this what we what you see here is a HTML table. So the TR text is like the table row, and the TH text are like the table header. So Jingyan, can I just press a Control S over here? Yeah. So this formats the code. Now you can see right. Uh, the, the first two text is like the table row and then the table header is like column one, two, three. Then at the bottom you see like TD text. So TD text they are like a uh, table data. So it's like text that are not the table header. So they are all they are all inside the TR text. Uh. So TR text is really just the table row. So you can see how what Jing mentioned earlier, the CSS uh, specificity and like the the like, like if your table data is like a child of your table row, how that can be very useful in cases like this. So yeah, uh, and code sandbox is quite useful. The moment you save, it just formats the whole entire HTML code for you so that it's very readable. Yeah, back to you. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks for the quick explanation, Chris. Uh, of course, if you would like to know more about tables, because logically table is also some kind of like content, right? It's back to the same thing, MDN. Uh, the sad thing is, Recently, fire, uh, Mozilla fired a bunch of like their maintainers for this, but still, it's 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 still the single greatest source of reference for like HTML and CSS like, on the internet that we have so far. Okay, but that was beside the point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I really should have put this like inheritance topic earlier at the start. So I guess I might have confused some of you earlier la, but I'll go through it now. So. Okay. With CSS, right, there is some level of inheritance. Uh. So uh, as an example, right, uh, in one of the exercises earlier, I think I had a star. Yeah, in, in this example CSS that I applied to exercise one, I used like the star to, to select like everything in the document. So in this case, everything in this document had this star applied to it, like font family, uh, font serif, color, and then a font width of seven hundred. So font width is like how thick, how, yeah, how hit the width of the font uh. So seven hundred is pretty big, as you can see. My text is quite chunky. And then this applied the star right applied everything, but notice that now I also have another, another decoration for for the P selector. So. I said that all paragraphs, right, in this should have a font width of only 300. And if we go back to exercise one, you can see that I have a, I have two paragraphs here actually. So this part, this is an exercise, and this lorem ipsum, these are two paragraphs. And you can see that their font width isn't as heavy. So uh, when I selected P, this style applied to, like the, the font width 300 applied to the paragraphs. Uh, the order here doesn't matter. If I were to place this P first and then I save this, yeah, it will still be the same. So clearly like uh, the P is P1, right? P selector over, over, overwrote the star selector. So there is some concept of like some uh, specificity and inheritance. Lah. So everything inherited from like this, but then as you can go, you are able to go like more specific. So when a property is not specified, the element either inherits from its parent. In this case, right, or rather I should, sorry, I should have a better example in exercise two, three. Uh, Chris, where did I do the, okay, I did it over here. Okay, now we go back to this example of a uh, okay. Uh, ignore the rest of the stuff for now. 
this is exercise two. Okay, we go back to this example of like the div and span, right? Notice that if I didn't, if I only style to the div, right, like color blue, and I didn't specify like what the span and the p are, are going to have, when I save this, notice that this is exercise two, right? Where's my example text? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, I moved example text up. So example text is over here. So example text is inside a paragraph, but I didn't specify that paragraphs should be of the color blue. So what it did was it inherited from its parents. So span also didn't have anything specified. So it span inherited from its parents and div, I specified color blue. So you inherit from like its parent. Lah. So this is what I wanted to say about CSS, the cascading part. Like this style, right? Cascaded all the way down from the div into the paragraph. So the paragraph got like the color blue. So that's what the C in CSS stands for, like cascading, because the rules of your styling cascade downwards into like the children. Lah. So certain properties right get inherited. Lah. Not, not everything, like color, font. Uh your border, I think yeah, padding and margin also don't get inherited. Background, no, not inherited. But others like color and font, they cascade downwards. So this, I guess I really should have covered this earlier. This is a table of CSS specificity. So we start off from the most general, uh, like with a star, as which they call a universal selector. Then the next, most, the next one, which is slightly more specific, is the element, followed by uh, two elements, and then uh, n elements, followed by classes, followed by universal with classes, attributes uh, and it goes on and on and on so eventually you hit like ids and at this point you are pretty specific really so ids override so if you are selecting something by id and then applying styles to it the id rules will override uh, everything that was before it as an example if i have like uh, p id equals to uh, example p and then I selected it by P. Oh, sorry, not P. Example P. I wanted the color to be, please give me a color. Okay, never mind. Aquamarine. Now, following this table of specificity, ID should override uh, an element selector, which is which is what the div was for. But now we are applying it directly to the paragraph. So if I save this, yeah. Aquamarine should have been applied to the example text. It's not very readable. Let's see. Font with 700. Uh, slightly chunkier. Okay, sure. And then followed by uh, combinations, some like combinations with IDs and followed by like ID, I, like multiple ID selectors. Okay, now this is interesting. Inline styling actually over is more specific than IDs like, in a style sheet. So if I were to be even more stubborn and I go over here and I say the style color goes to hot pink, it should be hot pink again. Yeah. And then finally, we have like this thing important, which is a declaration that you can put at the end. So say I really wanted it to be aquamarine. So I put, is it two? Important, uh, doesn't look right. Let me see, should be one, one exclamation mark. Right? Yeah, just one. Uh, oh, there's a semicolon here, yeah. So now, now this is even more specific than inline styling. And in fact, if I extract this thing out to like uh, P and then 
uh, brown, sure. Uh, and I remove the important here. Yep. Uh, this should be the most specific, unless of course you decide, no, I'm even more stubborn, I want to put an important here. <laughs> and then you go, you cascade down right, in specificity. Uh, not cascade down, sorry. You, you just go follow that order of specificity again. So as the name implies, please only use important when it's really important that it shouldn't be overridden. Yeah. Okay, uh, unfortunately, oh, I'll, I'll try to cover what I can with layout with CSS, sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, you have several units right, to specify length, like for example, your width and your height. You can specify with several units. So, uh, PT is like points. So, you can call, uh, pixel is a pixel, uh, is what it sounds like. And EM is, uh, Chris, EM is emphasis, right? No. I have never really went to read out okay. what it stands for, but you just need to know that it's a unit. It's a unit. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's a unit. I, I can't remember what it stands for now, sorry. <laughs> that uh, is, I think it's relative to like the size of your font, of your font, uh, like the, your default normal font. So uh, there are many ways to lay out your page with CSS. La. So as an example, we talk about layout, right? Uh, in this presentation, it's a very simple layout. I have like text at the top and then stuff at the bottom. But consider a more complicated page, in fact, like this. Uh, the layout is pretty complex, right? Like at the top, you have a menu for selection. At the left, you have this panel for different options to do the sandbox. And this is like a file explorer. This is for me to edit the code. Over here is like a embedded browser, which shows like the output of our code. So uh, there are ways for you to like CSS to lay out like this document using CSS. If not, let's see what this site looks like without CSS actually. No style. Yeah, it, this is like the page without CSS. So there's a lot of content. Uh, it seems like the font doesn't even render properly now. Yeah. So with CSS, you're able to con control it such that it goes into like this nice grid layout. And so grid is like a table. Flexbox is like a one-dimensional table. Is yeah, the description somewhat if you like restricted a grid from 2D into 1D. So you can either flex or grow along like one horizontally or vertically. And then you can use like CSS frameworks, which are giant giant pre-made CSS styles for you to download and then just apply to your site. Uh, and uh, there's also floats. Uh, sorry, sorry for having to rush this part. I'll try to cover grids. Yeah. So uh, this is exactly what grid is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you allows you to control your layout in like tr treating your star your styling as a grid like that. So to to use to use grids right first you have you need to have a container. So in this, we have, we declare an ID, a, a div, and then we declare that inside this div, the display should be a grid. And then for this brief temp, uh, grid, we have something, we specify a grid template. So this is one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, and then this side is one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. So I think this should give the, yeah, the first part is the rows. So we have like three rows over here that each take out like, one fraction each, so they should be evenly distributed. And then this side should be the columns, which are also evenly dis distributed. So this should give us a nice three by three square grid. So uh, grids, right, are very flexible. They allow you to, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is the grid that we, we display, we got to display using like this uh, grid template. And then this is another example of a grid. Uh, I think I've included an example inside here. 
yeah, this is grid two. So similarly, this is like this is grid, this is the code for grid two. Uh, we added some like border to show to clearly denote like where everything was. So we have like the display grid, and then we have four boxes. Uh, it's also a three by three grid, but inside, right, we have different content, which is box one to box four. So box one takes up uh, one column, and then it takes up uh, one out, one to four. Yeah, from one to four of a track, I think. So uh, yeah, these are the column lines. And then there should be yeah, row lines. So it takes out row lines from one to four. So grid one took up like from one to four of those row lines. One line one, line two, line three, line four. Grid box two is in grid column three over here. And then it takes out like from line one to line two to line three. And then say for three, three is somewhere in the middle here. So grid column two, and it only takes up like, starts from, takes up like line one. And then, uh, yeah, same for four. Yeah. So uh, this slash is how you specify the span. Uh, like where, where it spans from, from the row lines. So this is like the starting line and then the ending line. And uh, unfortunately, we kind of ran out of time, but I'll continue going on. Uh, yeah, please leave if you do have something on. Yeah. So uh, you can try to recreate the grid, uh, this layout using grids. As always, the solution is already there because of how I uploaded this. Yeah, but I'll, I'll just, Go through the solution for this. This should be exercise four. Actually, so, I think we can just skip this. I think they okay. can, since you give this to them, I think you can just go and explore this on your own. Oh, uh, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Okay, so that was a very like high level intro to uh, the basic, to basic HTML and CSS. Uh. So where you can go on from here is uh, firstly, nowadays as uh, from the from Chris question earlier of how to recreate Facebook, right? Uh, generally, it's, it's not enough that you're able to write HTML and CSS by hand. Uh, a lot of times pages are generated. Uh, HTML, and C sorry, HTML is generated and to a certain extent, your CSS is kind of generated as well, right? So we have like, JavaScript libraries, or maybe you can call them frameworks, to write certain things in JavaScript, like that look like HTML, and then the library will generate the actual HTML. As an example, right? Uh, I said earlier that this entire presentation is done in HTML and CSS, and there's also a JavaScript component to it. So, in fact, I think I can show what this presentation looks like as. HTML. So this is the entire HTML for this presentation. And I'm using a JavaScript library called review that allows me to that styles all this HTML as well as uh, have the behavior for like the navigation and all this to, what's the right term? It uh, basically sets up the whole framework for the whole presentation where the, like things like moving from slide to slide and like things like controlling which slide you are on to jump to certain slides. That's what Review.js does for Jing Yan. So for Jing Yan yeah. when he designed this presentation, right, he essentially just had to add in the content, add in like the code and like uh, this Review.js framework even supports things like code blocks, you know, like when he's highlighted code in his presentation, there's like the mono space font and all. So that's how, that's what Review.js helps you to do. Yeah, so uh, I, I definitely didn't create like this uh, highlighting component myself. 
I just declared a code block and then the JavaScript was able to look at the JavaScript looked at this like code block and then decided it should be styled like this and blah, 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 blah. It generated this presentation from there. So yep. uh, this is one example. Uh, React is another example. We are, we, so uh, if you set the code, this is JavaScript code. Uh, interestingly, right, it's like returning something that looks like HTML inside here. But uh, this actually isn't HTML. It's just that it's intentionally designed to look like HTML and also CSS. And then what this code block over here, right, uh, will generate is an application that looks something like this, where you can kind of see like there's uh, it's for some of the same structure, but maybe some things are different. Like for example, this image uh, was like some, it has a specific path from like uh, a, a variable that is specified over here and some fancy stuff over here. Uh, we should have a React workshop coming up at some point if you are interested in that. Uh, Chris, any info on that? Uh, I think that one is in after recess week, I think week seven or something. You have to check the website to be sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's plans for a React workshop at some point. And then finally, experimenting is really the, the one way that you can learn about things. Uh for HTML and CSS. Uh, as you can tell from the presentation today, I, there's like things are forgotten. So I had to like experiment with myself and then uh, backspace a bit here and then check a bit or uh, what's working. So experimenting is like the one way you really figure out how to, how all this works. Uh. And finally, at the end, which I kept rehashing. And for example, you can check out like some CSS uh, libraries, I think, I recommended like Bootstrap and Foundation over here. I think a very popular one nowadays is called Tailwind. Is that what it's called? Uh, yes. Yeah. But I think for beginners, it's easier to start with Bootstrap uh, since they have all the batteries yeah. included along. Uh, yeah. For experimenting, I think it's fine, right? Like looking at this. Yeah, okay, okay. You can, yeah. Yeah, you can just click on the components, then it will like show you everything. Yeah, on so the this side, is, yeah. is a massive CSS, this, sorry, not massive. This is like a CSS library that comes with certain components. So this is an alert. Uh, you can you can have like a lot of different styles. Uh, styling for your buttons, which uh, as you saw earlier, it looks quite plain otherwise. And yeah, compon yeah. So these are just some components. And also, yeah, nice fancy forms. Yeah, and uh, okay, and although this was an intro workshop, right, it should have equipped you like for with the basics so that you can start designing an own static website. Yeah, so uh, we have reached like the end of this workshop. Uh, sorry for overrunning everyone. Uh, we have uh, posted a feedback form in the chat. Uh, we would really appreciate if you feedback us, uh, if you give some feedback on how this was conducted and then let us know what we can do better. So in the future, uh, we won't. Yeah, uh, yeah, we will we'll improve on what we improve on what we have done. So yeah, we we'll really appreciate the feedback. And sorry for overrunning again, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming to the workshop. Yeah, uh, we'll stay around a bit for to answer questions. Yeah, have a great weekend and a great recess week, everyone. Yeah, and also if you're not from NUS, have a great week ahead as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So. If any questions, I think at this point, yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask it. Lah.